Arthur. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the member for Lawler. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, Deputy Speaker, it's an absolute pleasure to be upstairs in the Federation Chamber while in between votes in the closing loopholes legislation in the House below us. And it's interesting that the member for Casey, I heard him say that he wanted people to get paid higher wages. It was nice to hear someone from the opposition benches suggesting they wanted higher wages, but I'd ask the member for Casey to back that up with some of his actions, because he's just left the floor of the House of Representatives when once again he voted to keep wages low by pushing this legislation or attempting to put this legislation out into the never, never land. This is incredibly important, and that is on top of all of the other stalling tactics that have been used by the opposition since the first tranche of closing loopholes came into the parliament. We've just heard that detail downstairs. Now, this is important, and I want to thank the member for Hawke for bringing this on in private members' business today, because, of course, Labor wants to get wages moving, but not just get wages moving, not just that. The pendulum in industrial relations has swung way too far to the right, and we've waited a decade to bring fairness back to the table. And the best example of that is the section in the closing loopholes that deals with labour hire, that stops labour hire being used to undercut agreements made between workers and their employers. And this has been going on for a decade and has meant that we've had wages undercut. It has meant that people have lost ground in terms of their wages. This all becomes critically important in a cost of living crisis, of course. And Labor has always stood for a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And this legislation, the closing loopholes legislation, supports that. Now, I just want to touch on the uh, right to disconnect aspects of this legislation and just explain to some of the people in this room if they might not understand. This was something that was brought to my attention previous to my time in this parliament when, as a principal, I had staff come to me, teachers come to me to say, it's great that my team leader is working so hard, but seriously, my phone goes ping at 9.30 at night and it's a message from my team leader, can we do something to address this? You know, the solution wasn't that difficult. You can set up your emails with a clock and a timer. So you can have the bright idea, it doesn't land in the inbox until nine o'clock the next day if you get the settings wow. right. These are things that employers can seek to fix. And some of the solutions are incredibly simple and incredibly easy. Imagine, imagine. A teacher, a parent of a couple of kids, you're getting messages at 10 o'clock at night. You might already be in bed asleep at 10 o'clock at night. I know as a young teacher with a young family, I would have been asleep before 10 o'clock at night. These things are avoidable. It just needs care and attention to avoid them. This legislation means that people will understand that they do have the right to disconnect, that they are paid for work. And if people want to negotiate around that, in specific purposes, then I'm sure employers will find a way to do that. I'm sure that you can set this up reasonably. So, Deputy Speaker, it is clear that the member for Dixon, the leader of the opposition, the Liberals and Nationals, have voted against this legislation every step of the way. They voted against a fair deal for workers. Mm -hmm. They voted against swinging that industrial relations law back to a fair place. They voted against, voted against legislation that would stop people undercutting wages. These are all things that we don't want to see, particularly in a cost of living crisis. Mm -hmm. But as we know, they don't want to see anybody get a fair day's pay. They don't want to see people get a pay rise any more than they want to see low and middle Australia get a tax cut. That's the bottom line here, Deputy Speaker. Those opposite will say no to everything, to slow everything down, to push everything into the never-never, because they haven't figured out yet that after 10 years, workers have had enough of that and they want a fair deal. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.